Hey guys, welcome to Coffee and Tools. This week, uh, through requests, uh, a couple of people have asked me to do a what it takes to have a 3D printer, how to set one up. It's a big topic these days and it's getting more and more interesting. So what I decided to do was why don't we do a shortcut version and a long cut version or something like that because uh, setting up a 3D printer, uh, there's a lot to learn or there's a very little to learn depending on the type of machine and you know software and what have you. So I thought the best way to approach this was uh, the first episode I will do will be a uh, short you know, we'll, we'll just do a short version of how to set up a 3D printer. I don't need a cell phone for this. There we go. Uh, so, the first thing you'll need to do is, uh, yeah, go out and buy a 3D printer. So the first thing we're going to need is a is a <laughs> try again. Cut. The first thing we're going to need is a 3D printer. This is an average CR10 3D printer. So this is just a good example of a basic, inexpensive 3D printer. When I say inexpensive, well, several hundred dollars. Yes, there's various models, makes. There's everything from $89 to well, a million dollars on 3D printers these days. So it's really hard to just do a generalization. So I'm going to base everything on just this one right here. And just say that the CR10 is a good example of a good uh, printer that could be entry level for someone, and it's not that hard to do. So let's start with, okay, we've got the machine. What else do we need? Let's move on. The um, next thing we're going to need is a computer. I use a desktop, but you could also do it with a laptop computer. You don't have to use a desktop. Yes, you can do it with a laptop. It, 3D printing is not that difficult, and you don't have to be super geek guy or whatever to run basic files. And that's what we're going to stick with today. Is we're just going to talk about the basics and do the shortcut of you know using a 3D printer. I'm not going to do the uh, the long story behind it. This is part one. So what we'll do is we'll just deal with the basics. The uh, next thing you're going to be needing is to download this program right here. It's called uh, Cura. And we're going to open up Cura and have a look at it. This is the 4.4.1. It's a free download, so it's a free piece of software that you'll be using with your 3D printer. And it's really very, very good. And it's very powerful, and it seems to work really well with the CR10. When we go up to the top here, let me see if I can show yeah. uh, us. I've already uh, told Cura that the CR10 is the printer I'm using. Once I put that information in there, you can come over here to standard settings and you're going to see that, you know, it's already a sort of preset to work with that printer. Uh, you can change those settings uh, when you get more advanced, but right now, for everything that we're going to be doing, this is our slicer program. Really what this is going to do is change the file, which is an STL file, into a G code. The G code can be read by the printer. So, not a big deal. Don't, you know, don't panic. It's not a big deal but we're going to be using Cura in order to create a file that the printer can understand. And of course you'll have to put an SD card in somewhere so you can load that SD card up. So let's just jump out and now we're going to go to a website uh, called Thingiverse. And because we have this uh, Apple here, we're using an Apple computer. And here's Thingiverse. Now Thingiverse right now is absolutely full of thousands and thousands of uh, really cool pieces of software that will you know offer all kinds of crazy projects and you can also put it up here in the search engine and just type out something simple that you want to use so we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, we've already downloaded something once you download uh, on an Apple anyways and you know most computers it's pretty easy to just go to your download and take a look and see what you what you downloaded and in this case we've downloaded the CR10 mount. Now don't get confused because what's going to happen here is you're going to get this little box up here with the file and when you get that you're going to open these files, you're going to be looking at all of this and then open the files themselves. Now you see this, this here, this STL 
and also an STL. Now, we don't need to go any further with that. Let's go back and open Cura. Cura is going to open that file, that downloaded file for us, and it's going to recognize the STL file and be able to create it into turn it into something really cool. So now we'll open up our, at the top here, we're going to click on and open up our file. And we're going to see that we have uh, a couple of downloaded files that it's open directly to. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to put it on the bed. Now here's the first, uh, I guess we'll call it a little bit of a problem, but not a big problem. Uh, this, the way it's set up right now, see if I can turn this around, you can see what's wrong. A 3D printer is going to build layer after layer after layer. So this is a huge mistake right here right now because there's no way, uh, I'll just get my finger out here, there's no way a 3D printer is going to make it like that without supports. And we're not going to build with supports. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the item and it's going to give us you know directional movement that we can make. And then we're going to come over here to the side to Cura and we're going to take a look at scale uh, and in this case rotate. So we're going to go back to the item and now we have three possible ways to rotate this guy. And I want to take a good look at this so I want to show you this. So uh, I'm going to use the green bar and what I'm going to do is drag it, click on it and drag it around until I get the movement that I want which in this case is going to be this way because this will print rather nicely uh, flat. And you see it, it magnetically went right to the bed immediately which is this represents the bed of the uh, 3D printer. So that's a cool thing. So we're done with that part. Now we take a good look now see if there's any overhang or any weirdness and there isn't. There's The only overhang you've got left is this right here. But if you think about it in terms of you know right up in here. If you think about it in terms of uh, a 3D printer building layers there's no real problem because these layers are going to slowly graduate up to here. So you don't have, you really don't have an overhang that's going to be a problem that's going to need support or anything. Now at that point we're going to come over here and we're going to hit slice. And it's going to show us, <clears throat> yeah about uh, seven, oh, no, take about eight hours and it's going to need nine, is it 18? It's going to need, well you should see how much uh, spooling uh, of the filament you're going to need for that. Not a problem. And again, now that we've built this, we're going to put our SD card in to the slot where the computer can recognize it. And then down here again, we're going to hit this file, you know, save file. It's Cura's going to ask you to save it to the SD card, in which you're going to say, yeah, you know, that's where I want it to go. Now, once it's in the SD card, it's going to become a G code. So let's take a quick look at that. In this case, normally you wouldn't bother with it, but I'm just, just for the uh, demonstration here, I'm going to click on the SD card and I open up. Here's the files. And, you know, here's what's. Uh, Cura has saved already to the file. In this case, it has uh, saved the support, the spool support. So we're going to, but this file right here is what Cura put into this SD card. This SD card can now be inserted into the printer, and, the, and you can find this title in the printer's instructions and say, yeah, go ahead and you know run from the SD card, and it will print whatever this file is. In which case, we've already seen what it is. So that's pretty cool. And of course, I always use the computer's eject. I find if you use the Cura eject, you get into problems. So now, with the SD card in hand, um, I've created this situation. Normally, it would be the little micro SD card, and it would be going in the side of this particular machine. But I've sort of, I guess you could say, advanced this thing a little bit, and I've got my own little SD card slot. So I'll be putting that, you know, in. Well, I'll try to put it in. There we go. And I'm going to put it in there. Now, when I start my machine up, which the power is at the back, and I'm going to hit the button and come down to print from SD card. So we're going to hit that. And right at the very top, there it is, spool mount. That's the file we just loaded into the SD card. It's now shown right here. If I hit that button, this will automatically start the cycle up in order to print that on my on my bed here and so really it's not that difficult to do so from the file what we saw this is what we made off of the uh, what we saw the uh, STL file it was changed to G code then it was plunked in the machine told to go ahead and make it and this is what it made was this little uh, spool support that goes on top of the 
the CR10. This is just a, an example. And like I said, there are machines now that are wireless. There's all kinds of really cool, uh, you know, things out there that are happening with 3D printers. They're getting easier and easier to use, really. But I <clears throat> highly recommend Thingiverse. You know, it's it's free. You sign up and you know can go through all their files and look for things that you want to make. Uh, Cura, you need it as a slicer. That's a program that's going to change it from an STL file to a G code. G code is what this thing is going to read. And so, and also when you're in Cura, you can make changes and modify things. And that's really an important step. But you don't have to have to do that. Yeah. Did I also mention that you're going to need uh, some plastic spooling uh, that you can purchase off the internet? I pay around $22 a spool usually. I really like Hatchbox, which is right there. And you see the 175 millimeter filament, uh, one kilogram uh, spool from Hatchbox. And that one particular one is wood. These are all PLA, just, just typical plastic, different colors that I like to work with. Thought I'd better mention that. If you're trying to do it in a simple fashion, that's what I just gave you, was basically what it looks like when you're doing it, you know, simple and uh, not getting into too much uh, depth about tweaking and changes and that sort of thing. You can get into advanced stuff later on. Right now, basically, buy the 3D printer, have a computer, and you can, you know, the rest of it is up to you. Okay. Coffee and tools. Thanks for watching. Bye.